morning, friends. Glad to have you here. Thank you for tuning in and joining me for this awesome week's tutorial. And so I gave a couple options to my patrons, and they voted on a tropical scene. And it's very cloudy here in Seattle and gray. So I'm really excited to paint something sunny and warm and colorful. I have a painting here behind me. That's my latest painting I'm working on, uh, aside from tutorials and other work I'm doing. Um, and so if you'd like to see like the hyperlapse video and the process of me painting this um, on Saturday on my Instagram, I post videos uh, every Saturday. So be sure to check that out and the link will be on my description. I always like my own coffee. I make it in a Turkish coffee maker. I got to show you guys this. So this is the handmade Turkish coffee maker. It only allows you to have two cups of coffee in here, which is perfect for me and my wife, or two cups for me if she's not home. I'm fine with that. But yeah, you just put, you know, you know how it works. You just put ground coffee there and boil it and watch it go. Back to the point. Lastly, guys, I just want to thank you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. You guys are awesome for your support and love. Seriously, it helps me as a young teacher to you know give what I learned over the years uh, to teach you guys and give you some awesome techniques so thank you guys for that and um, I also would like to share that if you guys want to be a part of the vote on what tutorials or what I should teach next check out my patreon page it, they, there's also awesome rewards there where you can get a there'll be a vinyl giveaway you can get a one-on-one -on -one lesson uh, each month you'll get some awesome prints and uh, just things like that. Go check it out yourself and see the awesome things down below in the description. Okay guys, that'll be it for the news this week. So let's get to painting now and see what we can create. Alright guys, let's get started. Let's cover the materials. First, you need a palette. You need a palette knife where you can mix your paints with. Let's go over some brushes we're going to use today. You need the number 8 fluffy brush right here. You need a 1.5 inch flat brush. You need some of these are the sloth brushes, size 6, 4, and 8, and a double zero detailed brush, round detailed brush. And then obviously you need a jar of water where you can put your brushes in when you're not using them. Now let's go over some paints. So we're going to use titanium white, carbon black, ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, and naphtha red light. I'm going to put those materials on the description down below. And I got here a 12 by 16 inch canvas. It's already pre-gessoed, so it's ready to be painted on. And I'm using heavy golden acrylics paint to create this piece. So let's start with grabbing a blue, ultramarine blue. And we're going to do, we're going to work from the furthest point and work our way to the closest. That's what I always like to do. I always add layers. So, um, so what we're going to do is on the corner here, add about, I mean, it depends on how big your canvas is, but it's about two big thumbs for the blue, right? We're going to have that. We're going to, that's one layer. And then, I'm going to create a couple shades. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue there, just a little bit. And then I'm going to add some titanium white. I'm going to add a little bit, not too much here, just a touch. And then a little more here, right there. Next, we're going to add naphtha light red, and we're going to add it right here about this much, not much, very small amount. And last but not least, we're going to add 
cadmium yellow, a little bit onto this red one, not too much, and then a little more on next to it, like this. I'm going to grab my final color, titanium white, and add some to this color, and maybe a little bit to this color right here. So you can see I, I'm creating shades here. Obviously this will be the darkest, second darkest, and then it gets lighter as it goes, to, goes down. Let's start mixing them. Now I'm not sure what colors they will give me, but we'll, uh, I'll find out once we start mixing them. Um, so this will stay yellow, obviously. It'll just have a little bit of tint of white in it, but it'll still be yellow. Pretty bright color right there. Next we got this red, yellow, and white. And it's going to give uh, like a red color, pinkish color, almost peachy color, right? But you see, I, I, it's still pretty dark. And that transition between yellow and red is too strong. So I'm going to add more white here. There, I added a little bit more white, make it brighter. So it gave me this light pink with a hint of yellow in there. So it's not pure pink. Okay. Now we'll move to our third color. You don't need to clean your palette. Knife. Okay, that gave me the lighter blue right there. And then let's go to our last color. This will be the darkest color that we'll use tonight. Okay, so I'm looking at the colors. Do I like them? Should I add any more white to any of them? I think I'm going to add a little more white onto this one, this guy right here, this pink color. And then maybe a touch right here. I also made an orange color, so I used a yellow, a little bit of yellow, and just a little bit of red, and just a tiny bit of white, and I mixed them in just to have an orange, just in case I might use it. But we have these main four colors here, and we're ready to lay the sky down. Let's do it. We're going to need a fluffy brush, and what I like to do is, I like to make it wet before I start using it, so I'll... Uh, dab it a little bit in my water push it out so it's wet as you could see but it's not too wet and we're gonna start with the lightest color and go into the darkest I'm gonna grab this yellow right I'm gonna add it right here this will be our Sun where the Sun goes down okay and you can grab a little more water. I, I Sometimes if it's too dry, I add a little more water. And I just kind of lay it down first. About right there. And I'm going to grab it all. Just add it everywhere. Okay, and then remember this orange color I mixed? Just grab a little bit of, a little bit of it and just put it on the bottom. Put it on the bottom. Right where you made this uh, yellow grab a little more water and more orange just put it on the bottom about right there and then we're gonna grab this pink that we mixed okay I'm just gonna add it right there. Grab the pink. I'm dabbing it in my water so that it will spread like butter. Add a little more 
pink. You don't have to use all your pink if you don't want to. But about, about right there. Now we're going to grab our next color and just lay it down right after the pink. It's almost like we're making a, a rainbow colors right here. Almost. So grab the, the next color. Okay, I'm always dabbing it in my water before I grab more paint so it'll run smoothly. And now for the final color I'm going to grab this blue. Dab my brush into the water. We're we'll at the paint. Don't worry about cleaning the brush or mixing yet. I mean blending yet. We'll do that next. But just lay down the colors. Cover the canvas first. Okay. Cover the canvas. About right there. All right. That should do it. Okay, so now, now that we put the colors down, we'll clean our brush. After you clean it, I like to use a paper towel to dry off my brush, make sure it's all pretty much dry. If it's a little damp, that's okay. But um, then I go over and start with the lightest and just start blending it gently. Don't press too hard, but blend these colors together. Blend them. Make a smoother transition. Paint, uh, acrylic dries fast, so make sure you're, you're not, you know, letting your paint sit there because it'll dry and then it'll be hard to, obviously, you can't blend it blend the colors in so make sure you do this quick Now if your brush starts to dry out, you can clean the brush. You don't want to bring too much of the blue into the yellow. So what I do is I clean my brush and dry it and then let it work off from where I left off. So that's what I'll do right now. And I go off of where I left off. When it's dry, I go over and if I want, I can add some more yellow here just to make it stand out more. So I'm just going to lightly, and I'm now my brush is damp, so uh, I'm working transparent. Make sure it's not, you're not grabbing thick yellow or else it's going to cover the, the colors that we already mixed in our canvas just lightly and work your way upwards and just fade it out 
There you go. And I like my sun. I'll leave it at that. And now we're going to add water. This area is going to be where the water will be at on the bottom right here. So we're going to get our number eight flat artist love brush. It's uh, why I like these is they're really they're really good for mixing as well. They're they're kind of like they're cheap and but they're really awesome. It's it's pretty soft. It's really it works really good for blending as well. Um, but there also there is this other um, the same brand the Connoisseur Goat Round Mop. This is a number two. I didn't announce this one, but uh, this is also good to blend for the little guys like this. But we're going to go ahead and use this for now because this the water is mainly straight and this works a lot better. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this blue that we have left here. And I'm dabbing my brush into the water so it could be a little wet. And then just lightly add it right there. It'll be flat. And um, since it's a little too dark, actually it's perfect. Just make sure it's straight. Okay. When you add water to your brush, it runs smooth on your canvas. That's why I do that often. So after I added that first layer, I'm going to go ahead and grab the lighter color. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and grab this pink color right here and orange, mix these two together and add it right there on the bottom. Grab a little more white and this orange. And actually I'm going to add some red. I want it, I want the water to be more red than orange. More like dark pink, I guess. So I just added some just red and I'm going to work transparent. Just with water. More transparent. Okay, and then add it right on this side as well. Cover the canvas first. Okay, so we got our base down and then now we're going to add a little bit of this yellow that we have here and add it right in the middle. You don't need to add it everywhere, but just in the middle. Grab more. If you ran out of the color, you can pre-mix it um, and create that yellow. And it's just white, a little bit of white and yellow. All right, so now actually I'm going to add this color, this uh, second color from the blue. And I want to make it a little more bluish here. It's too uh, orangey right now. I want to make a smoother transition from that dark blue going into this red. I'm working wet. And just blend those in, okay. And now we're gonna add some more yellow. I ran out of yellow. Yellow and white. And 
we're gonna work wet still but add some light I'm gonna grab yellow right now just pure yellow and add some shadows not everywhere but like some shadows like maybe right there reflections I guess reflections that's what they are you don't have to add it everywhere but just straight down you can and it and I'm working wet so it's not too um, it's not dry working wet allows me to blend the colors nicely Now I'm going to grab this white and a little bit of yellow and I'm going to make a line. Like a ripple. Ripple. How about that? And just blend those in like don't blend everything in just make make sure you still have those lines going down you could see those lightly that's what makes it more interesting when you have more of those and add up one more here now I'm gonna grab some black Just black and lightly clean out your brush. Use the same brush. Lightly mix it with this blue that you have here. It'll give you like this darker, like a almost like a gray color. But the reason why I want to add some mountains or something in the back. Like that. Okay, and then maybe here, and then maybe bigger one here, going out like that. You can make this a bit bigger. All right, so we got that squared away. Now I'll let it sit there, and sometimes I use a hair blow dryer to dry it faster. And then I just go over and, and, and I just go over and make some areas just lighter using just white and water. And I'm going to make some of these areas a bit lighter. Add them wherever you want these lines. And this is important because th little things like this add to your painting. Make sure you always have reflections in your waters. Right there. There you go. Now let's add some clouds. So I, what I did was I added orange, a little bit of black, touch of black, and then some yellow and mixed that. And that gave me like a darker uh, red color, like a cherry color. And then I, I mixed this blue color that we had with a little bit of black. And that gave me like a darker uh, bluish black color mix right there, you could see. So those are the colors we're going to use for clouds. And let's start with this red one right here, this cherry color. And if yours is a shade a little bit different, don't worry about that. Don't focus on trying to get exactly the same color or shade that I have. Um, as long as you get it, you know, close enough, that'll work. Um, and so I'm going to start with the furthest clouds from the distance. And these clouds are far and they're just having a good time here, all bunched up, all alone. And I'm just kind of dabbing it. Dabbing it on, 
very simple. You can have your clouds look the way you want them to be, but just keep in mind that uh, you don't want to make them too big from, you know, from far, uh, from for this point. You, as you get closer up here, as you go up, you want the clouds to be bigger, obviously. So now we're just going to keep adding and carry it on if we want to. And I'm going to add one here. And then I'm going to add a couple right there. Maybe some of them go and touch those mountains there in the back. I'm going to cover this guy up with clouds. Some of them could be disappearing in there. And I'm going with the flow with this. This is the fun part because this is where you can be creative and add w the clouds where you want them to be. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. This is the fun part so you guys are able to add the clouds where you want them to be. Okay? I want you guys to have fun while learning, you know? Okay. Alright, so now we're going to add our goats with our second color, which we have made, uh, which is the blue, right? See, I'm having too much fun. I don't want to leave this red color. That we mixed here. Let me add a little more here. Cover it up. This area will have a little more clouds. I like to have it a little uh, less, you know, I don't want it to match my, uh, my picture. I don't want to match these clouds to this. Sometimes you want more clouds on one side to make it look more interesting. You know, things like that make the painting stand out more. Okay, so now we're going to add um, we're going to add this grab, you don't need to clean your brush, but grab this blue color, this dark uh, blue color that we mixed, and we're going to add a cloud here, okay, and this cloud can go, this will be a bit bigger. This will be a bigger cloud. And then we're going to want to go up a little. And we could go up and then just let it drop out right there. So we're going to add this cloud. See how it's fun? This is fun. You can create your clouds the way you want them to look. Clouds are fun because they're always different. Always. They will never be the same.
All right, guys, now we're done with our background. I could add more clouds. I could play with it and go on, but I think I'm going to leave it plain. I want the trees to pop out. So now let's add some palm trees. So I just added some carbon black here and I'm going to use my half an inch um, brush here and I'm going to work wet. So I'm always uh, dabbing it lightly in the water and I'm going to grab a little bit of the black and I'm going to start adding some palm trees. I'm going to add one right here and this will be one of our tallest ones and lightly create a shape. All right. You can make it thicker. Make sure it's wet because if your brush is not wet, it's going to it's not going to be as smooth. Remember that. I'm always dabbing my brush in, in the water before I grab more paint. Most of the time, not always. Make the tree as thick as you want it. Obviously, as it goes down, it's it becomes even thicker. I'll say about right there. That'll be my first one. I can always come back and fill in the details. That's my first one. Second one, let's add one right here. Right, and then next we'll add one right about here and this one could bend and make this one bend so you don't want them to all be even you know palm trees are crooked they're always different Okay, and then the last one, we'll add one right about here. Eh? We're going to bend this one as well. Going to add it right there. That'll be our final palm tree. Okay, so with the same brush, what we'll do. is I'm going to make some of these thicker remember as as you go down the um, it, the bottom has to be thicker and bigger than your top area so remember that and just go over them and thicken them out a bit Now I'm just using black, remember that. Nothing special. Now, with the same brush, go over and start drawing your trees. Now this, this part is, is fun, you don't need to be perfect, and just kind of Make sure your brush is wet and you know how the palm trees look like. Just, you know, draw them out where you want them to stick out and be. Remember, I'm always dipping my brush in the water. 
so that it'll run smoothly. That's the first one, the second one. I'm gonna draw it right about there. And I'm working wet, transparent, and then I'm just drawing where I want the, the branches to stick out. Okay, maybe one right here. Now, let's go to our next one, this one. And let's make this one like this. Work wet so that it will run smoothly. And our final palm tree.
Okay, let's add a little hammock. So we're going to use the same brush and the same color and we're going to grab a black again and let's attach it going from this tree onto this one. How about that? We'll just start from here and just go to this tree. There you go. And then There you go. And just slightly draw random things on there. Cover it up, not fully maybe, because you want it to look transparent. Maybe make this a little more deeper. Someone's maybe sitting in there. Why don't we draw a person sitting in there? How about that? I'm gonna take it out a little bit here. So now we're gonna use our detail brush and then let's draw, grab this orange that we have mixed here with our double zero detail round brush and just outline, pretend there's a head here, right, laying on there. So just draw a head and then a body going in like that. Or, you know, and just fill in this area lightly, lightly, because you know, hammocks are sometimes transparent, right? Most of the time, actually. So just with the orange, fill in those areas. We'll pretend someone's laying there and chilling, like Bob Dylan, reading a book or something. And that is our final little detail, guys. I mean, we can draw a couple birds, but I think uh, I think we'll call it good for this one. And then um, let me know, guys, what you guys think about it. Let me know down in the comment below. Be sure to subscribe and like if you like this video and if you've learned a lot. Uh, let me know. I'm always learning as well. And it's good to hear feedback from you guys. Okay. There you go. I think that should do it. Let me draw a string here. There. And then maybe also with the orange, we're going to add like a string shadow here. Maybe it's connected and you can't. Oops. Sorry, guys. Can't see it. There. There it is. All I have to do is just sign it. And just sign it right about here. There you go. It's all done, guys. Alright, here it is, guys. Thank you again for watching this and following along. I hope you guys learned a lot. And here's a tropical scene. All done. And painted. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think and see you guys next time. Take care and God bless.